Hello, my friends. Welcome to another video and what a video this is going to be. Today, I'm going to teach you how to create a magical midnight garden out of your acrylic pour painting that you're going to be doing on a see-through base. So sit back, relax, and let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be painting our sunset background. To do that, I'm gonna be using a few different colors here. Indian Yellow from Artist Loft. Cadmium Red Light. This is from Golden. Dioxazine Purple. Some white from Artist Loft. There's another product I'm going to be using today. Flow Aid. This is a great thing to use when you're trying to blend because it will slow down the drying process of your acrylic paints. Another product you can use is a retarder. Um, I just happen to have this on hand. Acrylic paint dries really, really fast and when you're trying to blend your areas together, it can start drying on you and you can have a hard time. Another thing that you can use would be lightly misting the paint that you've already put down on a canvas. You don't want it so moist that it's dripping, just a light mist of water. Okay, so we're gonna be using some Flow Aid. I'm just gonna put some of that on my palette over to the side here. So the last thing you're gonna need is a couple of paint brushes. Now I am doing a two brush blending technique, which means I'm going to use one brush to put the color on with and a dry brush to blend it with. So, you know, there's all different types of mop brushes that they sell. For example, this is Oh, you have got to be kidding me right now. I, I, I tell you, this is an oval mop brush. I'll clean that in a second. And you can definitely see the difference, right? Like this is big and fluffy. This is fluffy, but more thinner. But they're both going to get the job done, okay? So let me clean this off. I'm going to get set up here and we'll get started. I also have a cup of water here to clean my brush off when I need to, right? So we're gonna just move all of this to the side. I have a couple of paper towels and we are going to start. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my brush, I'm gonna dip it in this Flow Aid, okay? And I'm going to take a little bit of my white, bring it over here with my Indian Yellow and just lighten some of that up. And I'm gonna load my brush up with those colors. Maybe a little bit more. I wanna start off very, very light, okay? And we're gonna just start painting onto the canvas. Grab a little bit more. So at this point, we are not blending the paint yet. We are just simply adding the color sections to the canvas. The blending will take place once I have all of the color on the canvas. When applying your paint, you want to make sure that you move that brush in the same direction at all times. Do not go side to side and then up to down. Either side to side or up and down. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take a little bit of my yellow and my red 
and I'm going to make a pretty orange. Okay. And that's going to be the next color. So you can pre-mix your colors on the palette and not go through what I'm going through here. But I didn't want to make a lot of one color and then have a lot wasted. So I just do a little bit at a time. And it seems to work for me that way. But you most definitely can pre-mix your colors and get them all prepared ahead of time. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of come down this way with this color. Kind of work it into that yellow area. Come up nice and gently. All right, so now we have a nice gradient gradient from the yellow up into the orange. So now I'm gonna add a little more of my flow retardant here. I'm gonna come in with just some of my red. Gonna get that loaded onto the brush nicely. And then we're going to paint the red section. So it's progressively getting a little bit darker as we go. You don't want those harsh steps in between each color. You want it to flow nicely into one another. All right, we'll pull that down a little bit, like so. Now I'm gonna wash my brush off. I'm just gonna put it into my cup here and really rinse it off good. Take a paper towel and get as much of the moisture out of that brush that I can. We don't want it dripping. And then first, I'm going to take a little bit of my red, some of my purple, and blend them together. A little bit of that white. Okay, that's beautiful right there. Now the last color is gonna be our darkest, which is going to be the dioxazine purple. So I'm gonna take some of that over here. Maybe lighten it a little tiny bit. Just like that. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to come back in with our dry brush. And we're going to blend those areas up nicely. Now this, even though I used the retarder, is still a little tacky, but it's not tacky enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to test this out here and see if it's blending for me, which it is over here, and I don't need it that much. But notice how I'm blending the light up into the dark. 
that's going to get you a nice blend. Yes, you could pull the dark down a little bit, but ultimately you want to work the light up into the dark like so. Now we have this hard line here we have to deal with. Right there. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my brush again and clean it off really good. Some of my retarder and I'm going to get some clean red paint to work that area. Just straight red so it has a little pop. So now I'm going to come in with my mop brush and soften that. See how much softer that looks now? Much nicer. The lighter you flow that brush across the surface, the softer it will be. Very, very nice. Just like that. So had I been making this painting on my own and not recording a video, I wouldn't have had to do this here where I have to add more paint and blend it. It's because, you know, I have to take my time and explain the steps and that takes the time up and the paint is drying as I'm doing that. So all I'm doing here is adding a little more color and blending in those harsh transitions. Now the top area a lot of the, the outer edge you're not going to see, so I'm not really worried about blending that part. But um, these other areas I am because I'm going to hope that you're going to see some of that background when I'm done. So again, I'm blending the light up into the dark areas. And although it looks like I'm pulling some of those dark areas down into the light sections, I'm still before I take that brush away from that section, making sure I blend that light back up into the dark. Okay, so our canvas is dry. I went around and very sloppily painted the edges because you're not going to be seeing them anyway. And then of course I had a boo-boo where I dropped another paintbrush with paint right on the corner here or side, again, you're not going to see it. There's going to be paint there. All right. So what I'm going to do here is show you how you can preserve your background and do fluid art on top of this, of any technique that you want. If you want to do a Dutch pour, if you want to do a ring pour, a dust pan, whatever you want, you can do it with what I'm about to show you. So you need something for paint to flow on to be able to do a fluid art design, to be able to get the colors to move, to create a composition. If I were to put the paint on here right now, just the way it is, and try to blow it out, it's not going to move enough to create those nice defined edges. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put down a layer of American Floetrol. Now, believe it or not, this has been done many times before. This is not a new technique. You can also use something like a pouring medium if you want. Just coat the canvas in it as if it was your base paint. So I'm going for that palm 
tree, that classic palm tree painting where you have the beautiful sunset and the black palm trees. Except I'm not going to use just black. I'm going to use some uh, dioxazine purple, some permanent violet, carbon black, and then 24 karat gold by Deco Art. Right, this is the brand of paint that I'm using for the purples and the black. The white, I am using some of this, all right? I'm gonna be adding a little bit of white into the areas that I'm blowing out, not the base that you're gonna see me put on right now. So this right here is just good old American Floetrol. Let me tell you why I chose to use fluid paints today, because this will make sense. American Floetrol by itself, this is the consistency. These paints here, they are very fluid. They really don't have body to them. So when you add them to American Floetrol, you end up with the perfect consistency for acrylic pouring, like all the techniques. Even the little bit of blowing we're going to do today will work with this consistency. That one is just a little dark. Let me show you with the 24K. So yeah, if you were to add a fluid type of paint to American Floetrol, that's your perfect consistency. No water added. So the reason why I chose to use fluid paints like that was because I'm using the Floetrol by itself as a base and I knew that just mixing some fluid colors into some Floetrol would keep it pretty much this same consistency and I won't have any problems with cracking or uh, crazing, things like that. But I have to use this paint to mix up a little bit of white. This is going to be much thicker than the rest of my colors. So what I'm going to do is show you how I mix just this one color to get it to match all of the other ones. And of course, you can do this, ty this type of painting with your tube paints, but you're going to have to add water so that they end up being the same consistency as the American Floetrol on its own. So I don't need much. I'm going to just squirt some paint into this cup. I would say that is a large grape size amount of paint, okay? And then I'm gonna slowly add a little bit of the Floetrol. There's nothing mixed into this. And I'm going to mix it and keep adding the Floetrol until it gets thinned down, okay? Now, if I add a bunch of Floetrol in here and find that it's still thicker then the American Floetrol that I'm going to be using for the base, then I'm going to have to add some water. So there I added a bunch of Floetrol in there. Let's give it a whirl and let's feel the consistency of this. If you need help with knowing what the right consistency is for each acrylic pouring technique, I do have a video and a printable chart that you can use. The video explains how to use that chart. So this happens to be, other than that clump, perfect. It matches all my other paints. Now, had it been a little bit thicker, I would have just added a little bit of water. So that's how my paints are mixed. As for the fluid ones, what I did was I filled up a cup with Floetrol, well, three quarters of the way with Floetrol, and I just squirted some of this in until it reached the right color. Because again, these really don't add any thickness to your paints or your flow trough. So I just added a little bit at a time because they're very concentrated, mixed it. If it looked like the right color, I just stopped. If it didn't, I added more until I got to the right color. All right, so that, that's how the paints are mixed today. Now, what I'm going to do is pretend that this American Floetrol is my base paint. This will dry clear, and when the painting is all dry, you'll be able to see this beautiful background, and you'll also have your flowing design. Now, my plan is to put color in certain areas around the edge, 
and blow it out with two of my devices. I'm gonna use my flow blow dryer, all right? And if the, the area is too tight or I want some little wispies to come out, then I'm going to use my airbrush, okay? The Great Blow Dini. <laughs> that's it, I name all my blowing devices. So that's in my Amazon shop. It's a really, really simple to use airbrush. I have no airbrush experience at all whatsoever. I use this only for blowing paint her own. Although I should learn how to use it to airbrush. You literally get it in, uh, let's see. The box comes, this hose comes, and the plug comes. You put the plug right into this hole right here. You just plug it in. You screw one end of the hose onto the box, one end onto here, plug it in, push a button, and go. It's that simple. This here is the PSI, uh, how much air it blows per square inch. I just turn it all the way up, and I just use it. If you want it to be a little less powerful, you turn it the other way, okay? So very easy to use airbrush. I know I was always scared to use one of those because I thought you had to have experience, but you really don't. So here we go. What I'm going to do is take that cup of Floetrol that has nothing mixed into it, and I'm going to dump it on this canvas and tilt it around as if it was white base paint. So now my plan is to use the black first because I want that to outline and create the shadow behind my petals. So I'm going to put a little bit over here. Let's see. We want this design to kind of come this way. Have those trees kind of flowing over. Aiming down, we'll say. All right. Then, well, you know what? Maybe I'll do the top first and then see where I want to go with the design. Let's do it that way. So I'm kind of mad at myself for using this canvas. I had noticed it was a little tiny loose in the center and I didn't brace the back, but you can see how the flow trawl is pulling in the, like pulling to the center there. I will say I'm doing this voiceover uh, more than 24 hours after I made this painting and it's drying fine. But if you see that happening, that's, just a little bit of sag in the canvas and you could always brace it in the back with some cardboard. So now I'm going to use some air on this, but I think I'm going to turn it around first so that it's easier for me to work on. All right. And here we go. Okay. So we've all seen those paintings where it's a sunset background and there are black silhouette images of palm trees two palm trees that are on each one on each side of the painting and they're kind of meeting up at the top and folding down and coming down into the center of the canvas a little bit so i kind of had that vision in my head but then i didn't want to do that exactly so that's why i chose to use the blow dryer to blow paint out like this to give it more of a fuller look more floral-ish. Um, but if you want to try to do the palm trees, what you would do is use a lot less paint and then you would use something like a straw or an airbrush and just like kind of blow those, those branches of the palm tree out towards the center of the canvas. But this actually, I, I really like the way this came out. And tis the season for some spooky looking trees. So 
Stick with me. You will see the dry finished result. Okay, so I'm going to stop right there because I do want to do some of the designing with my airbrush. And now I'm going to decide where I want to go with this. Even though it's upside down right now, we're going to continue with that. So what I'm going to do is put a tiny bit here on the edges and kind of just blow them in a little bit. So what do you think about this? Do you want to try this technique? Are you going to try this technique? Have you tried this technique? Uh, as I said, it's not a new technique. A lot of people have done it in the past. And uh, I just figured with all the videos I see out there with blended bases and, and uh, people kind of bringing it back a little bit that I would try my own little version of it. So... I'm taking the air dryer, hair dryer, not air dryer, and I am, actually, it is air that dries your hair, so <laughs> it is an air hair dryer. Um, so I'm going really, really lightly here because I want to use the brush, the airbrush, to do this part. I don't want to blow it out like I did at the top part. And even though that flow trawl did pull a little bit towards the center of the canvas. The paints still flowed fine because the canvas was lubricated and wet from the flow trawl. What happened down there? <laughs> I missed the whole spot. <laughs> so let me just add a little color there. All right, so now it's time to get out the airbrush and do some fine details. So here we go. I'm just going to blow out some wispies. I'm going to use my little crochet slash knitting needle. I don't know which one it is because I don't do either of those. I uh, just had it for some reason because... I'm a craft supply hoarder and I have everything, but uh, yeah, I'm going to use that to make some little creepy crawly looking things, or I shouldn't call them that, some branch extensions. So I'm looking at this part here and it's a bit too far out, so I'm going to try to blow it back a little bit by pushing some of that flow trawl into it. Okay, just like that. Then take the airbrush. So a lot of paint hidden under there. It's still pretty far out, but let's see what we got. Let's work with this first. All right, so I'm just going to take my crochet or knitting needle. I don't even know. That's the one thing I don't do. And I'm going to kind of get a little creative here with it. So I'm going to let you watch this part and I'll be back shortly. Okay, while it isn't a palm tree, <laughs> and it's nowhere near a palm tree, 
I think this is going to dry pretty spectacular. It's going to be a really cool painting. This is supposed to be the top of the tree. So we're going to call this, instead of a palm tree with a, a sunset background, a spooky tree with a bit sunset background. Uh, what we're going to do now, though, is we're going to wait for it to dry. And then when I come back, you will see the final results. Let me just show you what this looks like with the flash on though, first. It's got a lot of uh, lacing. I'll also uh, let you know how long it took for this to dry completely. Now, that's going to depend on your location, obviously, but we shall see. Ready? I'm pretty excited. Alrighty, my friends. It is dry. It took four days for it to dry. You can see here, I addressed earlier in the video about how this canvas was very saggy in the center. Even though there's a brace back there, it had some pull. So the the Floetrol, the base of Floetrol was kind of pulling a little bit in the center. And when it was doing that, it was also dragging my design with it, as you can see. But that's okay, because we're gonna take this one a step further. I have some uh, fun new products I wanna try out that I bought. And uh, we're just going to add to it a bit. But you can see the beautiful blended background is still fully visible. And uh, I think this is going to look stunning when it's done. We're going to do these little additions here. And then we'll get a coat of resin on it. So what I'm going to be doing is I have these folk art dot paints that I just bought at Michael's. They are dotting paints. For uh, doing like mandala, the rocks and all of that. So I'm going to use some of those colors to create some funky looking uh, patterns in my leaves. I'm going to be creating. I have some uh, fluid carbon black that I'm going to be painting on the canvas to give uh, some shadowing to some areas. I have some glazing liquid out to help do that. I also have some golden zinc white. Um, it's, this is just going to be me brush painting. I also dug out a stencil. Now you can obviously draw leaves or branches by hand. They're very simple to do, but I have this stencil that I wanted to use. I'm going to use this part of it and I may even put a uh, little butterfly sitting in this tree. And my goal is to cover up this area here because I don't like how much it pulled. So we'll get it done. And uh, I'll let you watch that process. So I'm just going to show you a few of the steps that I did to create this magical midnight garden. That's, that's what I'm calling it now. No more spooky trees or palm trees. It's a magical midnight garden. So I used some stencils to create the leaves. Uh, I also added a few butterflies. And I used some acrylic paint to just paint them and shade them in. I also ended up using those dotting paints to make it a just really fun little place to visit. And I also used some glitter glue on a few parts of this painting. So, you know, it was so much fun to do this. I would love to do this to every single painting that I make. And I really want to encourage you to try this. Now, I couldn't show you the full process here, obviously, because it's already a long video. So I just showed you a few of the steps that I did to create it. So we have those painted in now. I'm going to do another set. As you can see, I did a few sets. So 
Next, we are going to put a little bit of a highlight into them. More of a veining look than a highlight, I would say, but it kind of achieves both. It really did make these leaves stand out from the canvas, so I was happy that I decided to do that. This is a 12 by 24 painting. Uh, if you're interested in it, you can send me an email, artbytammy at yahoo.com. So I decided to add a few little friends to this painting. These beautiful butterflies are fluttering around in the midnight garden, having a good old time. So if you take a quick look, or a close look, I should say, you can see where I'm painting there, right above it, you see some marker lines. I also drew in some patterns to add to this piece. I also decided to use some Stickles glitter glue in some of the areas to give it a little bit of a sparkle. And then next I took out the dotting paints, which I can say were quite addictive. You can very easily go overboard with these. They're so much fun to use. I did put the link for these paints in the description of the video for anybody that wants to try them. I like that you don't have to use the tool to do the dotting. It's just the bottle with the fine tip. So yeah. After everything dried, I added a nice coat of KS resin, and now you're going to see the final results. This may be one of my all-time favorite paintings. I think it is my favorite painting. I put a little bit of glitter glue in the center of the butterflies to give them a little twinkle, and although those, those petals that I drew in really aren't realistic in my garden they are it's just a happy little place and the butterfly friends are having a grand old time i want to thank you all for watching i truly truly appreciate your support if you have a minute check out the description for all of the information on how to follow me also be sure to hit that subscribe button if you are not already and I have a lot of learning videos on my channel if you're a new poor artist and need the help. Please make sure to hit the like button on your way out. And I want to tell you that I love you all and happy pouring.